Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few weeks ago, it dawned on me that the anniversary of Superstorm Sandy was going to occur right around the weekend that we Lutherans celebrate the festival of the Reformation. And I wondered, how can we link the two together? A destructive hurricane that had a devastating impact on so many people in our community and our church, on the one hand. And then on the other hand, a movement to reclaim the gospel message of salvation as a free gift purchased not by our own works or efforts, but by the blood of Jesus. Two very different realities, how do you connect them? And that's when I thought of Psalm 46, which we read today, and that provides some linkage. The, the greatest song of the Reformation, the battle hymn of the Reformation, sometimes it's called, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, which we're going to be singing at the end of church today, that hymn is based on Psalm 46. But Psalm 46 also talks about storms, as we, we heard the verses. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. So there we have our connection. The God who saves us in Christ is our fortress and our refuge, whether we are threatened by a superstorm or by the threatening perils of our sins. But it occurred to me that there is another connection between the Reformation and the storm, and the connection is this. If there had not been a storm back in 1505, there would not have been a Reformation. The Reformation was born out of a storm. And if you come to the Luther movie Wednesday night, you'll see that the movie begins with a storm. See, blessed Martin Luther was a law student. He was going to the University of Erfurt because his daddy wanted him to be a lawyer. His daddy wanted him to be a lawyer. And on July the 2nd, 1505, he was walking back to school after a visit home. And it suddenly began to rain. And then the sky exploded with thunder and lightning. And all around him, suddenly there was a massive flash and an ear-splitting crack. A lightning bolt had landed only a few feet away from him. And the young law student was thrown off of his feet and into the mud. And lying there in the mud, he cried out in prayer, not to God, but to the mother of the Blessed Virgin, as he had been taught. He cried out, Holy Saint Anne, save me! Holy Saint Anne, save me! Let me live! Let me live! Mercifully hear me, and I will become a monk. A rash promise, but Luther kept it. The promise he made in the middle of that violent storm. And he entered the monastery. And that is where he encountered for the first time the Holy Scriptures. And they sent him to school to learn about the Holy Scriptures. And reading the Bible, he discovered the wondrous message that we are saved not by what we do, but by what Jesus did on the cross. Forgiveness is a gift. And it's not earned by works, but it's received freely by faith. And if it wasn't for the storm that Luther got caught up in, if it wasn't for the violence of that weather, then certainly he would have gone on to become a lawyer. And since he was a very smart man, he would have had a brilliant career as a lawyer, and we would have never heard of him today. And he would not have uncovered that wondrous message, that wondrous treasure in the Scriptures, that salvation is a free gift. So in a way, the heritage of faith and freedom and joy in the gospel that we have emerged from a storm. And God used that storm as part of his plan. God has a plan. When I think about Hurricane Sandy, I think about that. Because I'm amazed at how many pieces fell together here at St. Paul's relating to the hurricane. We have a strong history of Katrina relief in our church. Our first trip to Katrina was the spring after the hurricane. We were there for the very first St. Patrick's Day parade after Katrina. And we've gone down to the Gulf just about every year since then, either to New Orleans or to Mississippi. And all those trips, prepared us for the day when a hurricane landed in our own backyard. We have lots of people here who know about 
hurricane recovery. Perhaps even more amazing is, is this. There's one person who's gone on every Katrina trip, besides myself. One person who's gone on every Katrina trip, and that is Larry Rapp, who read the psalm for us a moment ago. And amazingly enough, who happened to be hired as our church administrator uh, you know, a year or so before the hurricane? Why? The guy who knew more about hurricane recovery than anybody else here at St. Paul. Larry Rapp. So God has a plan. You can see all those pieces falling together. And God uses storms in his plan. We see that with Luther. The storm drove him into the monastery where he discovered that salvation is a free gift of God. And we see that in our own congregation where all of our Katrina work prepared us to deal with Sandy. Scripture says all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. And in the Bible, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans not to harm you, but to bless you, to give you a future and a hope. We are continually reminded God has a plan. And there is one great plan that we're all part of, his plan of salvation in Christ. When Jesus came into the world, became human for us, died for the sins of every one of us. We are all part of that great plan. But we also know that God has plans in our individual lives. And even though God's plans may bring some storms, ultimately, the plan that God has for us is a plan of blessing and salvation and joy. Glory to Him now and always. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ and life everlasting. Amen.